Attention, before we open up the planning board meeting tonight, um, this we've allowed the applicant to use this room and, and to use everybody here because we figured this would be the best place to get everybody out here. The applicant for this uh, amendment to the application has to do a DEP a public hearing to get feedback from everybody in the community. He's going to give a brief presentation and this is going to satisfy those requirements for his, the renewal of his DEP permit or, you know, denial, whatever. So it's, it has nothing to do with the planning board. We don't do those. The applicant has to. So um, we're just going to turn it over to uh, the developer right now. And we're going to have our own gonna, public hearing. Yeah, we're going to, well. July 18th. Yes, not tonight. So right, there's going to be no action tonight on this no action approval or denial of this application tonight, just so you know. <clears throat> Thank you. My name is Joe Maletti. I'm an engineer with Ambit Engineering in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. I uh, represent the applicant, uh, Black Star Realty LLC. With me tonight, representing Black Star is Mark Phillips. Um, we'll both be yeah, any questions. Yeah. Oh, oh, I'm, I'm uh, sorry. Right up there. Thank you. Um, this is an informational meeting for purposes of MDP, uh, MDP uh, permit renewal. Um, the project was originally approved in 2009 as a 90-lot subdivision for affordable elderly housing. Um, due to economic conditions at the time, the owner, Mark Phillips, chose not to build. Um, several permits lapsed and were renewed since 2009. Uh, this, this public information addresses the reapplication for a site location permit under MDP law rules. Other permits include a Natural Resource Protection Act permit um, that is due to expire in September 2019 for which we have a request for a minor revision and extension for that permit. Stream crossing permit by rule, a US Army Corps of, uh, US Army Corps of Engineers permit, um, general prog programmatic permit uh, to place fill in 24,611 square feet or 0.56 acres of waterway and or wetland in conjunction with the project. Local permitting, including uh, amended subdivision, uh, approval for which a public hearing is scheduled for July 18th. 2019, um, updated approval letters for capacity to serve for sewer and water are in hand. Uh, for a project overview, um, there are two access drives off Blackberry Hill Road, uh, designated by letter Road A, Road B, C, D, E, F through G as you get up into the site. Um, access road A, which is right here, is a one way in. Access road B is two ways in and out. There are a number of site amenities for the residents, uh, a clubhouse, a volleyball court, um, and other grounds in this area. Uh, speed limits are posted as 10 miles per hour throughout the site. Um, this area here is connected by a boulevard with a raised median. There are sidewalks that extend <coughs> from uh, along road B uh, up to this point of the site. We've, um, through our, through our um, reviews with the, the state, um, since the, two, the 2009 approval, there had previous blend, previously been a 250-foot buffer, uh, protective buffer for on, along Worcester Brook. That was extended for the, through this reapplication to 300 feet. That reduced the number of lots from 90, which you see here on the color plan, in this vicinity here. You can see the difference. It's a reduction of 13 lots from the 90 that were approved 10 years ago to 77 that we are applying for now. There is a sewer easement and a pump station here that will service serve the, uh, the site. Uh, stormwater treatment is by filtration, detention, forested buffers, and porous pavement, porous pavement along the boulevard, detention basins, filtration basins here and here forced to buffer in this area here of the site. Um, the project for construction will be phased, generally starting at, at Blackberry Hill, working in 
building building the road as as the phases progress, building lots as those phases are completed. Um, another change that resulted from the reviews at the state level included a change to the culvert, cro the, the stream crossing here. Previously, we had a, a twin three foot by eight foot box culvert. Um, it needed to be uh, wildlife friendly, friendly, have a natural bottom. Uh, we've revised that. It'll be a, a culvert with it, an arch culvert uh, with a natural bottom, having a 19 foot span. Um, and that's that's my presentation. Um, I'll open it up to questions, but I, I'd like to pass around an attendance sheet for anybody who is here to speak to the project, if I could. Mark, would you like to say something? Um, just a couple things. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, my name is Mark Phillips. I'm the uh, applicant developer. I've had this property since. Uh, uh, 2007 I think um, <clears throat> what you should know is that um, I'm trying to build this the same way that Russ Sylvester built Cold Brown Estates in Elliott and these photos are taken in Elliott just a week ago to show you what he's built down there typically they would be what we call double wide or uh, gable roof houses um, <coughs> sitting on a on not on not on a pad with uh, skirting four feet off the ground but on a sunken four foot concrete basement so that the homes hug the ground and each one is attached with a uh, stick built garage that way driving around the curb appeal is great because it looks like conventional stick built housing um, in his case he's sold like, these homes for standing at two hundred thousand uh, dollars and they're on rented land this would be all all the land would be maintained by the developer um, we'd rent the lots People would own their own homes. They would not be able to rent their homes. Hence, uh, everybody's a homeowner in the state in the community. And <clears throat> all utilities would be public, uh, be uh, individually metered for water and sewer. The roads would be uh, maintained by the developer, not at town expense. And it's an over 55 park, which means um, at least one member of every home has to be at least 55 years of age. And <clears throat> how that works out, I asked a friend of mine, Don Toy, who owns Pachico River Estates in Rochester. That's 128 units of over 55 uh, manufactured housing. It took him 25 years to build it. And I said, Don, have you ever had a situation where a family is living in there? And he said, only once. He had an older couple move in and tragically their son and daughter-in-law were killed in a car accident. So they took in the kids to their house and within two months, the kids couldn't stand it. There was no other kids to play with. There's no playgrounds, there's no facilities for kids. So the grandparents um, voluntarily moved to another location just for the good of their grandchildren. So that's basically his uh, history. So that would be basically, you may have either one or two uh, kids in school, but nothing like uh, conventional subdivision. Uh, that's basically my scale, unless someone has some questions. Yes, sir. Uh, how many bedrooms are? I would just. Uh, I, I know I'm not running the meeting, but it's it's on at home, so if you could just go to the podium. Okay. If you could just step up to the sorry, podium, yeah, just get viewers at home. Uh, how many units are? Uh, sorry, how many bedrooms are in each unit? Um, they vary. They either uh, you know two or three bedrooms. T typically, one is a uh, quote unquote study or a workout room for you know one of the couples, but it's not designed for you know families basically. Uh, so it's an over 55 community, and you uh, are not allowed to rent the properties. Who is going to regulate that? Um, well, uh, there's a. Um, some very uh, strict rules and regulations everybody has to sign when they move in. And it goes um, up, it's up to the, uh, you know, the owner to administer those and, and um, uh, enforce them. And I've been in the mobile home park business for 20 years, and um, people don't get away with spending their homes. So it's self-police, basically. If, you know, it's yes, up, it would yeah. be up to a neighbor to, 
to come in and say that. Well, we don't pull bed check, but I mean, we know who's who's in the house. And, yeah, you know. And, uh, the only time I've allowed, you know, a discrepancy on that would be if, a, if um, you know, a, a older person died and the, the daughter wanted to move into the house, that's family, that's uh, acceptable until she, you know, finds someplace else, but it's, they're not renting the houses to other people. Okay, because I think, um, I mean, they're, they're trail. I know you said they're on foundations, um, so I mean, they're trailers essentially. So I think, speak for most of the people here that uh, might be against it, that you know, it's a trailer park essentially. So that's kind of the big. Well, let me correct you on that, sir. Uh, <clears throat> you know, back in the fifties and sixties, you had a trailer. It was eight feet wide. You towed it behind your station wagon to go down the road. Yep. Um, all it ended on June thirtieth, nineteen seventy-six. That's when a mobile home became a manufactured home under HUD code law, federal law. So um, no bank will finance anything before that time. So everything out there now is uh, uh, HUD code, which is a national building code. It's got nothing to do with the local building code. Um, and so it has to meet those requirements. And it's uh, um, these, uh, these, these newer homes in good locations actually appreciate the value, not depreciate, which is for the first time in history, basically. Okay, uh, so there was a mention of a uh, volleyball court and some other amenities uh, up in the front there. Um, and my parents are in their 60s, and I don't see them playing volleyball anytime soon. <laughs> so, I mean, I don't mean to be rude, it's just kind of uh, like, like I mentioned a moment ago, it's more of a um, just a concern of well, it's, it's a manufactured home, park, whatever you, you want to call it. It's, um, it's um, redesigned for like a barbecue area. It's right next to the mailboxes. That's going to be a gathering place for older folks who are coming to get their mail every day. So it's a, it's a more of a you know, conversational gathering place and maybe a fire pit, that type of thing. Um, something more appropriate to the, you know, to the age. All right, thank you. <coughs> yes, sir. I got to go up there. And, uh, yes, please. Um, so I got a couple questions for you. I actually drove through Cold Brown Estates yesterday, mm -hmm. and it looks great. It's only two years old. I drove through a couple other uh, manufactured home parks in Elliott that are a lot older. Roads are patched. I mean, they're tired. What? You know, how is this going to be maintained 15 years down the road, 20 years down the road? <clears throat> well, um, when you do something brand new and you can control what happens over there, you know, then you've got a situation of the, the property you're referring to I own. It's uh, Marshall Estates. Okay. And I bought that 12 years ago when it was um, uh, in, in terrible shape. Uh, I bought a quarter million dollars out of the water system last year alone. Uh, they had terrible water over there as we resolve that. Um, so I'm working on the, the worst things first, if you will. But we moved a lot of homes out of there that are older, put in newer homes. So it's a it's a process, it's not an event. But in this case, everything will be a brand new home. It'll be, you know, you don't have to repave a road for 20 years. So um, it's gonna be in very good shape. It'll be okay. Good. And you said, are you intending to have this 100% 55 and up? I mean, I know the requirement for a 55 and up community is only 80%. That's correct. So HUD allows you to have discrepancies on that if it's people that are disabled uh, and need um, you know, assistance. They can be younger. And there's also um, an allowance for if you had like maintenance staff that was... Well, but the, the law just says 80%. I mean, it doesn't break down that remaining 20. Well, when I look that's at that's the it. idea behind it. So, um, so the, the the goal is to have 100. percent Right. Are you going to do it like Cole Brown Estates, where it would be residents of Berwick first, then former residents of Berwick, then relatives of residents of Berwick before it goes to the general public? I don't know that I can do that legally. That's uh, in, uh, I don't. I mean, that's that's. I'm just curious because that's the way they have it on their website. Well, I don't think he has a legal right to do that, but I'm not here to, to judge. Okay. I'm just uh, uh, obviously that would be great, but I don't know that um, that's enforceable. Okay. Uh, I've never had a question on that. <coughs> okay. 
like I said, it's right on there. If you look on their website, yeah, well. on, under the admissions policies. So, all right. No, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Well, my name is Peg Wheeler, I'm a Berwick resident, and um, when, the f when the project first came to the town, um, I may have been on the Board of Selectmen at that point, but some of the questions we had then, and I still have, all of these questions and answers sort of make sense, except for a couple things. I'm nearly 60 and I'm a parent of a child who is in high school. So uh, I, there are people in this town who believe that 55 and older means that everybody in the house has to be 55 and older. So I'm hoping that we can clarify that because I do have concerns about the impact on the school. Um, you're talking about projects like this that uh, don't have facilities for kids, but this is being built right across the street from a facility for kids. Really nice little playground. Um, and the traffic right there, and this is probably more addressed at the town than it is at you, is a nightmare. The traffic on that road is a nightmare. On uh, days where there are events at that school, it is virtually impossible to get in and out of the road right there. Um, and I'm concerned that with this additional traffic congestion right at the end of the road, if there's an emergency on that road, vehicles are going to have a tough time getting in and out. So. I know that the first time this was approved, that sort of fell on deaf ears and there were no adjustments made to the road um, and or to the speed limit, which also concerns me. The speed limit on Blackberry Hill Road is higher than it is on similar roads in Berwick. Pine Hill Road, Cemetery Road are 35. This road is 40. I walk on that road every day and I take my life in my hands. I nearly shoved my daughter in the baby carriage into the ditch a couple times this week because because of that. So I, I'm hoping the town hears that. I, I think it's really concerning. But uh, the additional concern I have is that you may have some very good intentions about this project, but it is quite possible that you may decel, decide to sell this project to somebody else. Well, whoever owns it has to abide by the rules as, as prescribed by the planning board. It'll be, it'll be demanding right on the, you know, the side mile hour that they sign. The 55 and older, 80%. Yeah. And, and the conditions of approval, I'm sure, will be a laundry list of... Right, um, but I, I, I do agree with the first gentleman who spoke, is the, who's policing that is important. If somebody purchases that project, who, who's going to be responsible for doing that? If it's somebody who's, just, we have well, some yeah. landlords in town who don't even live necessarily in the country all year round. So I think, I, I think it can be challenging to enforce those rules. Um, and given where the project is located, I think it's just inviting families or people my age with, with children still or grandchildren. So, thank you. I'd like to address the, her question about traffic and the project as a whole was fully vetted by the towns. I know. Years of various. <coughs> yeah. Uh, I remember. Towns. Um, one study or a review by Norway Plains Associates for the traffic impact analysis um, did find you know n no significant impacts that went into level of service at intersections. The uh, trip generations that were. Yeah, were I remember. But it it that go there when school's getting out it, it or in the morning at uh, drop off. I would it, also point out that. The, the peak, peak, peaks are different for elderly developments than are for normal residential developments. We heard that, um, but I, t I, I probably qualify as elderly, as do a lot of my peers, and we have trouble getting in and out of that road at the times I go to work. I, I do think that trends have changed. I'm not retiring anytime soon, so I need to get to work at the same time that people need to drop off and pick up their kids, and I have kids and grandkids that are still going to school. Um, so I, I think calling a retirement com community is awesome. I wish I was retiring at 55. I'd be lucky if I retire by the time I'm 90. And I, and I have a lot of peers who are probably in that same boat. So I, that, that's wonderful. I just, I remember when that was done, people felt like that was not, there was not a lot of integrity to that study. Because there are, I live there, I can tell you that that just makes no sense to me. The congestion is already something that needs to be addressed. Uh, the road is dangerous already, so I can't, you're going to double the number of residences on that end of Blackberry Hill Road. My husband and I were trying to calculate last night how many we have at that section of Blackberry Hill Road, and that's literally going to double the number of residents to suggest that that's not going to create some traffic congestion on top of already having a school down there is, is just, that just doesn't make any sense.
but it's my my two cents. It's the same two cents I had the first time it came around. So fewer units. So. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. If, if I if I may, we're going to have a public hearing on this application next month, but this is just about the DEP. So I know there's a ton of questions, and we're also going to talk more with the applicant during the planning board meeting. But this is just about the their permit with the Department of Environmental Protection. So uh, I know this is your first opportunity to come out and ask these questions, but and I would I would entertain questions that pertain to environmental impacts, wetlands, uh, wildlife. Not trying to shut right anybody out. down. I'm just trying to stay focused. So I'll add a few wildlife comments if nobody else wants to. <laughs> That's what we're looking. That's, yeah. that's yeah, what we're here I, for. Well, but I, I, well, I'll tell you what I did to prepare for this because it's what I do. I run a program in veterinary technology and animal science, so it is my life, um, and I do walk on that road every day. The amount of wildlife that's getting squished into Blackberry Hill Road. I have essentially a population of three or four turkeys that live in my front yard because they don't have anywhere else to go. We've got bears running up and down the street. We've got coyotes running up and down the street. We've got two populations of threatened and endangered turtles, one of which I know you already know because it was an issue last time. Um, we're dealing with spotted turtles on that road now, which are on the, on the, on the watch list as well. Um, but I, I mean, I, I see that you're addressing some of that, so I don't know, um, I don't know that I can add to that. I did contact some state folks about these issues who feel like because of where you're at already, this, there's nothing more to complain about than we've already done, and they don't really feel like there's there's much we can do. Um, I, I do hope that there's some integrity with addressing the wildlife um, protection there. The culvert that you managed is, is positive. More of a buffer for the brook is a positive. You're going to be getting into a really active population of beavers up there, too, who may mess with your plans a little bit. But... Um, they're there, and it you can't take that kind of a space and, and not impact wildlife. So we'll see the impacts, I'm sure. Well, I can tell you that Mark is uh, going above and beyond in the sense that he, there are a number of recommendations that came out of our reviews with Inland Fisheries and Wildlife, U.S. Army Corps, um, that because the Army Corps pro, uh, permit is, is still valid, yeah. they can't impose higher restrictions. No, on that I, that's what I was however, told when I contacted people. However... Yeah. Um, it did come up at our meetings, mm -hmm. and they did ask for more, yeah. and Mark is... Right. I've already... More. So I'm only saying this to be on record as having said it. I did make the phone calls. I know that that's the case, so I know that really there's not an awful lot we're going to do. I just hope that it is, is addressed. I appreciate your concern. Um, I just want to make one uh, casual comment that <clears throat> basically everything that's in the light color here, you know, is the, is the development area. Mm -hmm. And that really coincides with the gravel dirt that was right. put in there years ago. Steve Brown started out his career pushing dirt there for the Clements many, right. many years ago. So basically, we're not we're not really touching the forested areas and the dark brown. It's just the, the light green, which has already been, you know, stripped of uh, topsoil, and it's, right. it's just alders that are going back up there now. For the right. Most part. Yeah. There's a lot of wildlife traffic through that area, so it'll crunch that in a little bit. Thank you. Thank you. Other questions? I just have one more quick one I forgot. Is that enough? Uh, How long do you plan on this uh, project lasting? From so I know you said you were going to do it in phases. That's correct. Um, what's your estimated time from breaking ground to every, every lot is completed well, and sold? The first phase is the, is the, is the toughest always the way because <clears throat> we have to bring in um, you know, town water, and then create town sewer. Um, so that's that's a lot of infrastructure on the front, and that's that's going to gain us this first loop of of ten homes, and from there, we have to build this boulevard, which is quite a quite a feat. But once we get past the boulevard, we can do there's like three phases beyond that, and each phase could be like a, in a year. So it might be you know five or six years. Um, over the course of, you know, the 77 units. Okay. Thank and you. If the economy falls flat again, it'll be longer, you know. Right, so. yeah, naturally. Uh, All right. Thank you. Thank you.
there are more, no, any more quick questions, we'd conclude the meeting. I'd like to have the uh, sign-in sheet back. <coughs> Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you all for coming. Thank you. Okay. up all right good evening I'd like to welcome everybody to the Berwick Planning Board meeting this is a regular meeting for Thursday June 20th 2019 if we go and rise for the Pledge of Allegiance I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands one nation under God indivisible with liberty and justice for all James, just for your minutes, it's 6.54. <clears throat> the Planning Board me members present tonight, regular member Sean Winston, the Vice Chair, Niall Shore, absent tonight is Paul Bovere. Uh, also present is Nicole Fecto, Mike LaRue, who is a alternate, he is not here. He decided to have a baby. Yeah, he's a, a new dad ago, and so, an alternate. And just bringing him, bringing him home today, or her home her. today. Uh, we do have a vacancy now that Noah Cobb is now a selectman. So if anybody wants to be on the planning board as an alternate member, we do have a. Peg Wheeler. We do have a, um, a vacancy. More girls. <laughs> also joining us tonight is the uh, town planner. We also have the code enforcement officer and the town planning technician, Facebook administrator, and webmaster, James. <laughs> <laughs> and concert director, concert promoter. Promoter, right, yes. Um, and various members of the public. <clears throat> uh, next on the agenda is the public comment session. It's open to any resident or property owner in the town of Berwick to come forward and talk about anything that relates to the planning board. So feel free to come forward and just state your name and your address for the record and for our viewers at home. So public comment sessions open. One other thing I'll, your name Peg somebody. Wheeler. Yeah, <laughs> Peg Wheeler. Sorry about that. The one other thing I'll add that I know didn't apply to that DEP permit is I remember last time there were some public safety concerns with the boulevard piece of that project about getting in and out of there. I don't know whether that changes anything, whether the Berwick PD and fire department have had conversations with anybody about the changes in the traffic on that road. I did today. I talked to the Berwick Police Department about my concerns about it, and I know uh, Jerry Locke took a ride out there, so just adding that. All right, thank you. Anybody else for public comment? Sean Goodwin, 65 Sullivan Street. Um, I attended the Selectman's meeting on Tuesday evening to clarify some things, get some answers and stuff for the record. Uh, first off, I'd like to thank Mr. Chair for the email that was sent um, regarding the board's concerns on the use of the, the parking lot, so thank you very much. Um, I was told Tuesday that it wasn't shared with any other members of the board, which I think is not right. Um, I think maybe... Um, well, well, well my, my email wasn't shared with... Members of the select board or yes. the planning board? Yes. All the select board? Yes. And um, I think that's wrong. I think, um, I can't speak for you, but I'm assuming your intention was to make sure that the board as a whole was informed of you folks' opinion on, on what's going on there. Um, that way they could make an informed decision or do their polls or whatever it is they're trying to do over there. <clears throat> I was told it wasn't shared because it was just a simple correspondence and it didn't come from the planning office. So I'd like to know if you could define what the planning office is. Sitting behind you. <laughs> James and, and Lee J. Yeah. Okay. 
Okay. Well, they, they were CC'd on the email. I, the town manager yes. yep. and the, the chair of the select board were all uh, on that email, and I got, an, I got one email back from the town manager. Yeah. yeah. I think that's sad. Uh, with that said, the board was not polled if they were in agreement, as stated by the manager on the May 2nd meeting. And um, if it's okay with you, if I could share that correspondence with the rest of the board members. Sure. Yep. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> I also asked him about the moving of the blocks over there. If you've been by there, you've seen that they put the blocks down through the center, forcing the cars closer to our home. And um, I asked, asked about why it was done, and it would, they said it was to limit the parking. However, we all know there's no enforcing of the parking over there. And the blocks were moved without any direction at all from the town manager or anybody else. He said it was done solely by the public works crew, which I find to be nonsense. Common sense suggests there had to be communication and some kind of direction given. Um, I'm not going to go over that whole meeting and all that stuff. I urge you folks to watch it. Um, most of you know the history of what's going on over there. I asked if the town had instructed the CEO if they, if, to not enforce the 22-car limit, and they said no. And our lawyer has told us that this is a CEO enforcement issue. And I wish to quote Ms. Fecto from June 6th meeting in which she said, the planning board job is to uphold land use ordinances and comprehensive plan for everyone, including the town. And that is not being done. So that leaves you folks and the town planner to have Mr. Vincent do his job and stop this nonsense. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you coming out here. Anybody else for public comment session? <clears throat> the only reply that I'll make to that last comment is I continue to say that the town is in violation of the land use ordinance. I agree. And the town should cease using that parking lot. I agree. And how do we enforce that? I will find out. Well, is there not a provision in the land use ordinance that says if an applicant comes before us and is not in compliance, that their application must be denied or at least can't proceed? I believe there is. I need to go looking for it. Right. So when the time comes, should they come before us with an application, that will be when we can do our job. Correct. However we decide. The, the you as a board can do your job, yes. Yes. Listen, I, I don't want to get to the point where we're <coughs> going to ask the code enforcement, or we're going to ask Dan to go over there with the cease order. but. If I remember correctly, three months ago, we had a concrete plant that was operating without an approved permit out on Route 4, Correct. and mm -hmm. you went over there with a cease order and shut them down because they weren't approved and they were actually doing that work. But now we have the town. I mean, they're not being held to the Have same you been standards. talked to about this? I have. By who? By the uh, town manager. What did the town manager say? Make sure you get this in the mic. The, uh, I should take a mic. Mm -hmm. Dan Vincent, Code Enforcement Officer for Berwick. I agree with you that there should be some resolve to the parking area. The other thing that is skipped when we discuss zoning ordinances is that the zoning is for the general welfare of the people of this community. And general welfare means the entire community. It's not selective to be at one residence or one parking lot or anywhere else in the town. What I've taken under consideration and what I haven't uh, move forward with it because my thoughts are that this will be resolved somehow, but it seems like that's dragging along, but eventually it's going to be resolved. My concern when I go there to enforce uh, a 22 car minimum, uh, you gotta look at the people that are disabled, the elderly, now they're parking out on streets where probably the fire truck or the ambulance can't get by because it's parked on both sides. There's no sidewalks ap appropriate for children and people walking to the game. 
So there's other people that are in actual life safety situations that are going to be in jeopardy until the town finally does a plan. But I'm not going to put people's lives in jeopardy. That's also my job for the, for the welfare of the community. What, what did you have the discussion with the town manager about? About the whole situation. We've discussed all these. We discussed disabled, we discussed elderly, <coughs> we discussed the fire access, emergency access, young children, uh, sidewalks, and street crossings. We have lived the, without this parking lot for yeah. how many years? Yeah. Shut the parking lot down until they come with their conditional use permit. No. I don't understand what right. is so hard about that. Put the blocks across the front of it and shut it down. They don't have the conditional use. Just like Northeast Ready Mix did not have a conditional use permit and you shut them down until they went through the process, which lasted a long time and cost them a lot of money and a lot of heartache. Mm -hmm. The town is not above the citizens of the town, and I think it's ludicrous. And we put the people out. Of, we put people out of work because they had to stop, yeah, we and people, people out of lost out on work. And I don't take any benefit out of out of that parking lot because my kids don't play t-ball or, or, or little league anymore. You know, they're not. The parking. We've this never is, had the parking lot before. No. Can, my, can James? James, can you speak to where? Where do we stand on the application? Where do we stand on the plan? So the last time we were the town was in front of you guys. The uh, Todd Gammon from the engineer firm. We talked with them that night to get the proposal in the works. Um, they've already been at the site me measuring, so we expect to have the survey done. I think this month, or excuse me, July. And then at that point, as soon as the survey is done, we get the we we'll get the fence up. As soon as we know the property lines, and then the site planning can be done. Do you know why all the parking <laughs> was put <laughs> right next to his property? And, and his, him and his wife's property. Well, Why was no, all that no, parking that shifted over there? There is a letter board sign that says no parking along the Yeah, line, well, that's doing a good board. job. That, that's yeah, doing a really, all that's all doing all a great off. job because people are parking right in front of it. It's ridiculous. It's absolutely it's, ridiculous. <laughs> so I, I just think the, the logic was just putting the, the, the blocks in the middle of the property to cut the area. Put the blocks down. along the fence line too so cars can't park there. I, I agree with Nicole because... Oh. Mike. <laughs> um, you know, I was, I was, my kids were involved in the baseball. I was down there for eight years, every spring, summer. That parking lot was never there, like Nicole said. Everybody found a place to park. It was fine. There the was gate not was a problem. changed. You couldn't go through there if you wanted no, to. No, you couldn't get through there. There's ADA parking down by the main gate to the rec field. There's, there's no reason to use that field. I don't believe that the number of kids playing ball has increased since my kids played. I think it's actually might have gone down a little bit, or it stayed the same. So there's, there's no real need for that parking lot immediately and right now. So the whole thing should just be closed until this all gets resolved. It's crazy that we're still talking about this, and it's still causing a problem. It's still being used. Just close the parking lot. Eliminate the problem. Yeah, and then... And, and you know, the so sure, some people are going to complain, but... Too bad. You didn't have this parking lot a year ago, so get over it and deal with it. Yeah, get there early and park where everybody else parks so you can get a spot. Don't show up five minutes before the game and expect to get a parking spot. And the elderly... AJ, isn't there a provision in the land use ordinance that also says the applicant has to show that it has the technical ability to comply with the land use ordinance before we can approve something? Yeah, and I mean, I've, I found the first statement that you were asking for. I, I'd have to go looking for the other statement, but I'm sure it's in there. Most every land use ordinance or zoning ordinance. So it, it, it would at least suggest to me that an applicant who is unable to comply with the existing uh, land use ordinance provisions would not have the technical ability to come with a new application before us. And perhaps those who are speaking on behalf of the town ought to remind the Board of Selectmen and the town manager that the land use ordinance has those two provisions and that it's at least the intent of one of the members of this planning board to take that seriously. Thank you. Well, as you could tell that we're pretty heated about this, so uh, <laughs> if the, if I need some medical anybody marijuana. else for a public comment <laughs> session? Okay, moving on from public, I'll close the public comment session, moving on to the approval of minutes for the June 6, 2019 meeting. I do see one thing in here, James. Uh, wait. So you're taking Paul's position tonight? I am I taking something. Paul's I, position. I see something that I'd like I to see, too. <laughs> what? Thank you, Paul. Nicole's Thank you. No. Oh, that's one I messed up. Well, 
Under new business, under Blackberry Hill Road, it says a public hearing was set for 6.30 p.m. on June 20th. Can we just say that that right. public hearing has been set? The applicant will be having an EPA application public hearing. DEP. At, at DEP. DEP yep. um, but we didn't set a public hearing for this. We didn't set a I'm June 18th. Yet. I know we've been talking about that date because that's our next July, meeting. July 18th. July 18th. Thank you. But we didn't set one. So can you just make that change? Yep. All right. I would like the minutes to reflect on page two under old business, uh, the conditional use for David Springer. <clears throat> that um, it, you mentioned the purchase and sale agreement for the, I would just like a clarification. The purchase and sale agreement that is referenced here is for that um, cabin that is not on his property or on his property, whatever, um, but that no escrow was collected. Uh, there's no, I mean, the purchase and sale agreement is bullshit because there's no escrow <laughs> collected. <laughs> well, no, the, the, there's no, there's no escrow collected. How about collected. just BS maybe next BS, time? Yes, whatever. Sorry. It's Berwick. Wow. You just pulled a, I won't say it. <laughs> Thank you. It's going to compare you, and but. Don't do that. Um, but that, but that's all. I just want that. I also messed up on a motion, so I'll fix that too. Good job. Make sure you don't put those well, comments in the minutes. In the first half hour. <laughs> Anybody else saw any changes to the minutes? Okay, if there are none, then motion would be for the approval of minutes as amended. I motion to approve the minutes for the June 6th meeting as amended. Second. Further discussion? All in favor? I wasn't here. Abstain. All opposed? Abstained. So that's uh, three. In favor. Three in favor and one abstained. All right. Uh, moving on to old business. Subdivision amendment, Blackberry Hill Road, map R56, lot 3-2. Applicant is Black Dog Realty. Um, I would suggest so, you put that on the table since they have left and no one is here to discuss the application. Yeah, I just I put it on the agenda just in case there was anything to talk about. But. Well, but can't we, we can still go ahead and set a public hearing even though they're not here, right? <laughs> that's a great question. Um, I don't think I, so. I would suggest we don't. No, we haven't even voted an application again, complete. Again, that's that's that. Well, one, you have not found the application complete. Oh, okay. And two, uh, again, they're not here to discuss the application, so it really ought to automatically be put right on the table. Why? Why? Well, no, I mean, I'm not asking you why. I don't understand yeah. why they leave. I don't know. I think they thought they were done for the night. Yeah, other people who were here to talk about it thought it was all done, too. I think that you know, just got confused. All right. It was a separate. Okay, well, we don't have to table. We could just move. We don't. We could just. Correct. Just you keep can it just open. Move, move ahead. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Conditional use application, medical marijuana production facility, 398 School Street, R3 zone with frontage on Route 9, applicants David Springer, Springer, and we'll turn it over to Mr. Dustin. Do we have the easel for him? Oh, we're good. I think you guys have seen that enough. I think it's so. It's the same plan. I agree. Um, Dustin Morrow, Lion Pro Lance Van. Hold on a second. I'll turn it over to Lee J first. Yeah. Thank you. Um, but uh, thanks for coming. Thank you for coming. Um, <laughs> Thank you. So I, I did not provide you any revised memo. Um, again, you received, I think, a a copy of a check um, that I think I saw two days ago. Um, again, I think that was part of our general discussion about getting information in a timely manner. So I haven't, I didn't have time, nor did I provide you anything regarding that. But you do have that in your packet for tonight. I did revise the findings of fact based on the last meeting. Um, more importantly, as part of that, the um, finding that I specifically addressed for you was the way we you walked through the exterior lighting findings. Um, on, there were three sections of that. It's on the bottom of page three um, and goes to the top of page four. And of course, everything in red is the statements that I had heard you folks make um, as it related, of course, you understand. We don't have red, black, so, so. Uh, <laughs> must be a, it, or the, the red italics. Italics. Is there not a red copy paper. <laughs> red ink. Um, <laughs> so, uh, so starting so on the is, bottom is, of page is, three, is that uh, is the italics in red? Is that what no, the italics is your is the finding statement. Um, the so, regular blocked print would be the finding statement that you folks so, would. So, have. what's in red? The finding statement. Would you like my copy? 
I guess we'd like you, you to read what's in red. Actually, we could have made we could have had fun with Niles and said, <laughs> "What do you mean what it's not mean? red? It's right <laughs> here." I, I've had that happen. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, this is what I turned into. So I'll do it again. <laughs> it is fairly lengthy, but if you'd like me to read it, I think it it regurgitates what you folks discuss section by section okay, of the and, lighting piece. But and when you get to the red, yeah, of let course, us know. of course, <laughs> of course. So under exterior lighting, um, the finding statement starts with all exterior lighting shall be designed to minimize adverse impact on neighboring properties. In red, um, it says, in making, these finding, in making this finding, the board considers the following standards. The finding statement says, lighting may be used which serves security, safety, and operational needs, but which does not directly or indirectly produce harmful effects on abutting properties or which should impair the vision of a, of a vehicle operator on adjacent roadways. In red, it says, the planning board felt that security on this site is of concern and that the nearest property was located at least 150 feet from the lighting. Furthermore, during the on-site inspection, the abutter stated that the light was affecting the area of her kitchen and the board indicated that people have shades in houses and that you do not sleep in the kitchen area. <laughs> so they felt that this portion of the standard had been met. In italics, which is the next finding statement, lighting fixtures shall be shielded or hooded so that the lighting elements are not exposed to normal view by motorists, pedestrians, or from adjacent dwellings. In red, the statement that was developed says, during the discussion, one board member indicated that to check on this issue, he drove by the property after dark, uh, it should say one evening, and he had to strain to look into the property where the lighting was located so he did not feel that impact on vehicles was a concern. The abutter, issues were, the abutter issue was addressed above and one other planning board member indicated that there are very few pedestrians along Route 9 in this location. The third piece of the finding states, direct or indirect illumination shall not exceed 0.5 foot candles upon abutting residential properties. In red, it states, most other communities establish zero light at the property line and the board felt that 0.5 is generous and that not all lighting spillover can be stopped. The applicant further indicated that from his pers perspective and that his perspective and that all of the lighting and that of the lighting consultant Steve Moulton and the state electrical inspector Bill Perry indicated that these lights met the dark sky standard and were shielded appropriately. Thank End you. of the finding. All right. Thank you. Well done. That was good. Appreciate it. <coughs> so moving on, um, in the conditions of proposed conditions of the approval. Um, I had put, um, we are already had, the applicant shall ensure that all lighting installed on the site, including but not limited to building and poles throughout the site, is dark sky compliant with cutoff fixtures to prevent light trespass on neighboring properties to the street. The other statement that was added um, is number four, yep. which says the purchase of property noted in the purchase and sales agreement must be executed on or before July 31st, 2019 and the executed deed be submitted to the planning department or the shed be removed prior to the issu issuance of a certificate of occupancy for building number five currently under review and then the typical other standards for your conditions any other recommendations or things that you see uh no we've covered this one beat <laughs> this, this dead one. horse to death <laughs> dustin um, yeah, sorry about the check. I just thought we had to bring it here tonight. Me and Mr. Springer both. Um, he did. It was dated from his attorney at 524, so it wasn't lying last meeting that he had already given it to her. And we just thought the purchase and sale agreement was good enough because you do that for subdivisions and stuff till they get approved. You don't want to buy it if it gets shut down. But um, so hopefully we get that covered. Um, yeah, you know, I think we beat this one to death. Um, Mr. Springer's tried anything you guys asked above and beyond and just trying to cooperate as much as he can. Um, I was hoping he was going to be here tonight, but he was busy down in Seabrook. Um, Are you happy you won't have to come back here for a while? 
Hopefully, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I might just come sit because it's, it's like a <laughs> twice a month thing now. Yeah, planning board opening, so. I, I saw that. It's fun. It's fun. All right. <clears throat> Questions from the board? All right, so this was the only thing that we were waiting on. So, I mean, we could, tonight we have three votes that we have to do here. Approval of the findings of fact, approval of the conditions of approval, and then approval of the application. So we have three votes this evening. Well, I will move that we approve the findings of fact for applicant David Springer for 398 School Street. Okay, we have a motion. As amended or as written? Because you suggested some spelling errors you wanted to correct. Um, we as long as you vote on it, I will clean it up and make sure it's back. Beautiful. That's that's an easy thing. I, I will second the motion. Further discussion? All in favor? Okay, that's four nothing. Um, next on to the approval of the conditions of approval. I move that we approve the conditions. Sorry, Sean. <laughs> I'm removed. <laughs> yeah, keep going, keep going. <laughs> For uh, the David Springer yeah. project at 398 School Street. I'll second. Okay, further discussion? All in favor? Okay, that's 4 0. Okay, and then finally, fast, approval of the application. What is the application? It's, it's in sure? stuff. What do you mean, where is it? Like, you have it in my package. It's not in your package. Oh. Yeah, we already We're have floating it. Floating around for a few months. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll make a motion that we approve the application for 398 Portland Street. Second. Further discussion? All in favor? Okay. Perfect. Have a nice summer. Yeah. Hopefully. <laughs> See you in the fall. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> Next on the agenda, conditional use application, 115 School Street, map U3, lot 42. This is in the R1 zone with frontage on Route 9. The applicant is William Dame, and I will turn it over to the town planner. Great. Um, thank you. Uh, William Dane is proposing to demolish the existing building for the use, uh, for the use from uh, and from the use, and from construction, construct a new building with two auto repair and detail detailing bays. Uh, as part of the review of this project, the applicant is utilizing a portion of the ordinance in Article 6.6.3 um, under note number one, which allows for reduced side yard setbacks. The abutters setback are 5.82 on the west side and 12.84 on the east side, uh, allowing this property to have a 9.33 side yard setback. Um, I would be happy to go through the rest of that for you, but I think more importantly, um, what I'd like to suggest is that under the revised report for you, um, the big question that came up on the plan was um, a number of the front parking spaces mm -hmm. are in the DOT right of way. And I had a long conversation with Ryan about that so that we could um, try to come to some conclusion on it. And um, you will see Title 29, Chapter 29A, Chapter 19, um, rules of the road, subsection 2068, for parking. Um, Ryan provided that to me after some of his own research, um, and basically it outlines how parking um, can and cannot be done in the DOT's public right-of-way. This parking that is on that site is not applicable to um, being affected by DOT um, parking requirements. The applicant is proposing to tie into the public water supply, which has a main on the other side of Route 9. This, this means that the applicant will need a DOT permit to trench, trench across Route 9 for the eventual tie into the water. And it has been determined that the town does not have an urban compact designation, which in turn will require DOT approvals. Um, the road was paved six years ago, so they're outside the moratorium and can cut into the road to tie into the water um, when they choose to do so. If you're not aware, when the DOT repaves a road, there's a five-year moratorium uh, from cutting into it, and the only time you can usually cut is if it's an emergency situation, but we're beyond the five years uh, in that section of road. The last issue is that the applicant is proposing a new fence line to be extended on the property um, of Anna M. Brown to the east side of the site. 
Um, he will need to obtain approval from Ms. Brown in order to put the fence on the property um, or add an extended fence on his property. We discussed that during the site walk at 530, and um, we should be obtaining a letter um, or a statement from Ms. Brown indicating that she has no problem with the fence being placed on her property. Um, the revised plan also shows the proposed building um, as the board requested at the last meeting, so you do have a, a um, building plan in front of you. Um, the building is a traditional 12 by 8 peak roof with clapboard or vinyl siding to match a New England style structure that, uh, to the best that they can. And at this time, I have no other concerns or issues on the application. Right, I'll turn it over to you. Okay. Uh, good evening. My name is Ryan McCarthy. I'm with Tidewater Engineering and Surveying. Um, VJ covered most of it, but uh, to go over some of the changes we made to the plan since the last one you, that you, you saw was we, uh, we added the, the um, building mounted lights to the building. Uh, we had the location of the existing sign, um, the proposed fencing. So there is an existing fence on this side of the property that we're, we're proposing to extend back to the back, um, pretty much the tree line. Um, that fence is on the abutters property. Um, once the boundary survey was done, we noticed that you know the the boundary line was actually the fence was actually over the property line. So, what we're going to do is we're going to propose to the the abutter that we simply extend the fence. Um, it, the the fence was replaced by Bill Dame um, when he bought the property, so it's a really nice white new vinyl fence. Um, you, we're going to try to get a statement from her um, if she's willing to allow us to extend the, pro the the fence. We'll get a notarized statement from her to to provide to you as the board. Um, in the event she doesn't want the fence there or the fence to be extended, we can adjust and we can shift it over to to our property. Um, on the other side of the property, to the left side of the plan, as you're looking at it. Um, we are proposing the same type of fence. It's a solid panel white vinyl, and that will be extended to um, just about the back of the building. Um, we've also labeled the general parking area for vehicle sales in the front and a general area for vehicle repairs in the back. Um, you've asked for an LID statement. Um, the proposed de uh, development incorporates a few different LID measures, the first being um, the majority of site is already developed at 72% with the proposed scenario where we're reducing that just a little bit. Um, you get a little bit of a benefit there. Um, during the site walk, we talked about the, there's a grass strip between the sidewalk and the parking area for vehicles for sale. Um, the soil composition in that strip is pretty poor. It's mostly sand and gravel and, and weeds. So what the applicant would like to do is scrape out the, the top uh, surface of the material, bring in some nice loam, and uh, establish uh, establish grass during that in that strip. So the runoff that's coming off the the front half of the parking will actually go through that grass strip, which will filter out a lot of the particles and uh, promote some infiltration too. Mm -hmm. In the back half of the property, the back half um, sheets back to the woods behind it and comes off a, a pretty steep embankment. So what we thought we could do is um, we, we would create a shallow vegetated swale, just a shallow depression, um, to collect any of the runoff so it doesn't just go sheeting right off of that embankment. Um, any debris or sediments that's in, this, in the runoff coming off the pavement will also be trapped in that, in that shallow depression. So those are the LID. Um, it, the LID uh, measures that we're, we're proposing for this project. Um, the building elevation views have been provided to you. Uh, we took a look at all the, the existing buildings along that, that stretch of road. Majority of them are just simple ranch houses, um, so we mimicked the, the same style for the, the proposed garage. So this is the this is the elevation view of the buildings. We've got two garage bays. Just out of curiosity, what color is it going to be? I uh, couldn't tell you that. I think we were talking yeah. about a, a gray, beige, yeah, gray like a neutral color. color. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Not like purple or pink, no, nothing yeah. crazy I'm like green. that. I'm <laughs> green, no. It's, it'll be a neutral color. Um, off to the left-hand side is the entrance to the office, and it, the, the front facade actually allowed us to have a nice area to, to put the business sign right above that door. 
Looks good. Just one minor thing. I, I yes. brought it up last time, and I, and I know that the tax maps, the tax cards have changed, but that lot just to the north, that's the town of Berwick owns that land. Heritage Estates doesn't, or Heritage Woods doesn't exist anymore. Because that was my old subdivision, yeah. so it's town of Berwick. Yeah. So James, if you're trying to uh, notice Heritage Woods, you won't find them. Well, I, I, I want to make sure you didn't think I ignored that. No, 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 um, no. I don't. I don't. I'm just. We did take a look, up. and we found the deeds that yeah. conveyed out the open spaces for that subdivision. Mm -hmm. And if if you look at the legal descriptions within that deed, um, there's three different open spaces for that subdivision. It only conveyed the two that are titled covenant areas. And the open space that's behind this one wasn't actually conveyed to the town. Oh. Ooh. <gasps> Ooh. Dun, there may dun, be another dun. deed out there that <laughs> does that separately, <laughs> but I, I couldn't find it. Oh, I'll have to go back and look at that. Wow, Ooh. Mr. President. No, I'm the treasurer oh, of my homeowners association, so <laughs> it's not my fault. All right, thanks but for bringing th that up. There yeah. may be another deed that we just didn't, okay. didn't see. Any questions from the board? I got all kinds of questions over here. <laughs> um, so the plan is going to, uh, says that the water and sewer, you'll be tied into the public systems. But right now, is there water and sewer at the property at all? Okay. So you'd have to, you have to tie in in order to, to do this. Um, and then under our uh, findings of fact, under number six, um, since you haven't actioned on this, these are I know, draft. I know, but I just, I just want to yep. talk about it since yep. I have it circled. Um, it just says, we have it says, saying that the applicant has proposed a drainage pond to the rear of the site, and I don't think that that's an accurate description. Drainage swale? Yeah, it's because... It, yeah. Drainage called it, depression. They called it a depression. depression. I've depression. heard depression a few times, which is different than a pond, so... Sure. It's actually a pond back there. Did you know <laughs> that? Well, you still There's own it, so go enjoy there. it. <laughs> it's a skating pond back there. Perfect. Well, maybe we'll... The town of Borough, from what I understand on Facebook, the people really want more places to skate, so... Ferguson Brook. <laughs> you know, if you had the colored copy like I do, you'd see that I had it marked in red because Did you? I questioned it. Well, good job. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Patty and I are working on this. You guys are going to get... Um, uh, tablets, yeah. and you'll get your packets on your tablets, and they'll be in color. I like paper. <laughs> I would rather just have, I'd rather have a comp plan than having tablets. Seriously, I'd rather have a comp plan than tablets too. We're sorting that soon. <laughs> How about sidewalks instead of tablets? <laughs> <laughs> How many feet of sidewalk can you get for a tablet? Yeah. I'm just kidding. Now we're getting off course here. I'm sorry. Stretch, yeah. I'm sorry. What's that? Um, so last time at our meeting, we. We did vote this application complete. We did with the LID. Correct. Um, which they and I, I do like that. That makes a lot of sense what you're talking about there with the grassed area there and the runoff going into the street and all that. So um, so the next thing would would be, I mean, we would want to have a public hearing on yes. this. Yes. So um, we would want to set a public hearing. Uh, would it be too much, you think? Uh, well, no, because we're not doing a public hearing on the 18th. This will be the only one. Correct. Just want to make sure that is the date, right? Because we're not meeting on the 4th because Niles wants to celebrate 4th of July instead of having a planning board meeting. <laughs> this is America, for goodness sake. Come on. Raise the flag. Uh, raise the flag. I've got to be the one to remind us about America. Come on. Now. So the 18th at 6.30 for a public hearing, does that work for you? James, work for you? The 18th? Yeah. Yep. Lee J, Dan, yep. everybody yep. else? Yep. All right. Thank you. Okay. Great. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Um, next on the agenda, we have uh, a public, another public comment session. It's open to any resident property owner to come up and talk about anything relating to the planning board. So public comment session's open once again. Everybody We're running left. out of public. <coughs> There's no public. We're running exactly. out of the public. That's my sister-in-law, so she's from Florida. Um, well, she can't you, can't, you can't come up here and talk. So. Uh, sister-in-law, I was going to say. It must be nice to be It's a lot cooler here than in Florida, right? <laughs> <laughs> We'll see nobody come forward, close the public comment session. Any uh, items that the board would like to share with the public or other members of the board? I would like to request that we get something in writing from the town attorney 
relative to the Blackberry Hill subdivision? Oh, sure. Um, I didn't. Have I didn't it. make that statement today, but I did speak with him this afternoon. Yes, I, well, I know. Yep, you. and I will ask him to follow up with a written statement on that. Um, Presumably, for us. it will come up at some point in futuro, as they say. Absolutely. I could share the emails that. Or I'll have James share the emails with you guys. That way, I'm not. Hi, thank that you. way, I'm not sharing stuff um, over email with everybody. But well, I think we saw the email. Or are there more emails no, than what the we email saw? That, no, 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 no. This is the email that I sent to Lee J, asking him to talk to the town attorney about. Oh, okay. The application and okay. the response, yeah. and, and and he was ready tonight to. Okay. We planned it all out. Yeah, made, that's right. Yeah. So. Well done. Anybody else? All right, next on the agenda is the adjournment. I move that we adjourn the uh, June 20th planning board meeting. I'll second. All in favor. <laughs> and it's done.